Got a few things in a state sale this weekend. I'll start off with this one. I picked up three of these Kodak Instamatic 104s. I think these are like the most classic looking of the Instamatics. You had the later 70s which ones which I also like, but I think this is a 1969 104. It's got its space for a flash cube on top. I also have one upstairs that takes a magic cube. That one's not a Kodak, it's called the Magimatic. Of course these took 126 in somatic film, came in a cartridge. Very much like 110, which was a smaller film. Took two uh, AAA batteries to fire the flash cube. And that, have three of them now. I'll make a uh, more detailed video with some history behind it. Next thing I got at the estate sale was 13 Betamax movies. They were mostly pre recorded, uh, commercially produced movies, but these two I pulled out just in case the younger people have never actually seen Betamax tapes before. This used to be really popular when I was a kid. You could go to your uh, little video rental place and get your movie on either VHS or Beta. It disappeared quickly around 1995 when uh, VHS sort of won out the market. But there were a few places you could still find them after that. And I got 13 of them. Here's one that has a uh, case still on it. Good stuff. Next thing I got was this Polaroid Spectra 1. This isn't a Spectra 2 they made later on in the 90s and 2000s. This is actually one of the originals. Produced probably around 1991, 92, something like that. You can see this one has the sonar focusing and the high quality lens. They had a lower model that didn't have this. It just had autofocus. Cool. This was Polaroid's wide format camera. As opposed to getting a square picture when you took it, you got one that was a little bit wider, a little bit taller. So it was sort of like regular, like if you got a picture developed, almost. Still pretty expensive though. Cool part about this one, my friend had one of these and had this feature. sort of got a bunch of computer controls. It makes noise too. It makes little chimes and things when you're, you got the timer on. It'll make like a sound like ding, ding, ding until it gets ready to start flashing. It'll get faster and then take the picture. That's got an autofocus off. I think that's what that is. Flash off, brightness control, uh, timer, self timer, switch the controls between metric or standard uh, measuring um, a remote port and two lights that tell you whether your battery is any good and if it's good it'll turn red start charging and they'll turn green which means your picture's ready to take but they don't make film for these anymore so and somebody will say, well, you can still buy Fujifilm instant picture film, but they don't make a Spectra format. On this is the little number window. It tells him how many pictures you have left. Very cool. One of my favorite Polaroid cameras. Excuse the mess in the garage, too, if I haven't said that already. Next thing I got was a 
least AT&T Trimline 210 phone from Lucent Technologies. You can tell this was after their um, legal battle because it says previously part of AT&T. I believe Lucent Technologies was the leasing company that took care of the telephones in the late 90s, early 2000s, but I could be mistaken. I believe this is also a leased one because you could buy these at Kmart and they had AT&T written all over them, but this one has the Lucent Technology stickers. And if you take, saw some people's numbers in there. What was the number on this one? 609-218-2587. Got this one at a yard sale in Salem County. And plus it has a little barcode thing you could scan. So I'm thinking it was a leased phone. But it's cool. You got a light up touch tone dial uh, another thing that was interesting was I bought this way out in the country and it's actually still set to dial pulse as it's supposed to touch tone so they, I guess they don't have that out there yet ringer was set to off Get mute, redial, flash and of course it's that beige color pretty cool next thing I got was this Western Electric New Jersey Bell telephone as you can see Bell system property not for sale Let's see what the number on this phone was it's got the old South Jersey Exchange, or I mean area code. That's the number for the Glassboro Public Library. Although this phone's not connected right now. I, I remember these stickers from when I was a kid. They used to be on our... We had a Western Electric desk phone. They used to have that 10 NJB sticker on there. This one was issued in, I believe... March of 1981. I think that's what that means. A telephone expert will know what that means. It was the back of this was manufactured in June of 1975. You can see it's property of New Jersey Bell. It's no longer around. We have Verizon around here now. That's what happened to what became Bell Atlantic, but cool. Been looking for one of these. This one also has modular connections, which is nice. This one was actually a trade. This wasn't part of that yard sale, estate sale day I did. Um, but this is pretty cool. It's a contemporary Coleman adjustable two mantle kerosene lantern. I'm thinking 1970s on this, but I'm not sure. I say contemporary because as somewhat modern instructions on there it's a model 288A700 one of the issues why I got I traded a small vintage kerosene uh, wick lantern for this and the glass is broken I think it was a good trade. Judging that the new to, the new models of these go for much more. It's 
got the little pump so you pump up the kerosene and then you turn it on and that lights up like a uh, propane lantern glows very cool I'll do a video of the startup on this too next thing I got was this Technics SLBD22 turntable. I actually got another Technics turntable too. It's an Audio Technica. TC 236 EP cartridge and stylus. This nice dust cover over the platter. Also got a Technics SLD20 turntable. Do a close up on this. This one has an Empire stylus and cartridge on it. Also has adjustable anti-skating and tone arm weight control. Seventh Sojourn. The pitch sink. I like the ones with the manual pitch adjustment. 